morning, Uganda. Today is a great day to make someone's day. A wonderful day to rewrite the future. Today is a beautiful day to light up their world. Or maybe even the perfect day to say, you're my world. A marvelous day to make a brand new start. The perfect day to make the world smaller. Uganda, today isn't just another day. Today is your day. Airtel Money with you always. Airtel Money, instant, secure, borderless. Hello and good evening. Thank you for watching UBC Television. My name is Wadulo Mark Arnold and we'll be show, shortly joined by Mugali Muhammad on the sign language. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Police arrests over 20 people working at Chireka Stone Quarry. The Yellow Broadcasting Corporation takes museum to Soroti Town. Longest smuggling tunnel discovered at U.S.-Mexico border. And the Sports World Athletics Indoor event was pawned. secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field couldn't be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Yeah. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communication sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Welcome to the news tonight. Once again, my name is Wadulo Mark Anod and on sign language we'll be joined by Mogalu Mohammed. In our top story today, President Yuri Museveni has awarded the Ambassador Smile Shagwe for a long-serving Algerian diplomat and current Commissioner for Peace and Security at the African Union, with Renzori Star Medal for his support towards Uganda and the UPDF in operations against Lord's Resistance Army. The award ceremony was conducted at Mestil Hotel in Zambia, Kampala, and was witnessed by Foreign Affairs Minister Sam Kotesa and the Chief of Defense Forces General David Mohosi. Ambassador Smile Chagwe was also recognized for his role in the Regional Cooperation Initiative for elimination of the LRA in Central African Republic. He was also hailed for supporting Uganda's contribution in Somalia and Amisom, as well as the country's ongoing war against terrorism throughout the time he has been leading the Peace and Security Department of the African Union Commission. 
In other news, President Yori Kaguta Museveni has also commended the people of Bufumira East constituency and Chisoro district for casting their ballots in his favor and all national resistance movement candidates during the last general elections in 2016. He said that Bufumira constituency gave President Museveni an NRM 99% victory of all the votes cast in 2016. The president was addressing a rally at Gatete Catholic Church in Bufumbira East constituency. The occasion was organized for the president to thank the residents of Murora sub-county for their overwhelming support to him and to NRM in the 2016 general elections. More details in this report. President Yoweri Museveni has assured the people of Gatete, Murora sub-county, in Kisoro district that government will facilitate them with improved mobile telecommunications. The president donated to the people of the area 10 cows and also pledged 50 million shillings to Gatete Catholic Parish Church. <laughs> Mr. Museveni was happy to note that the NRM government has played its role of establishing infrastructure in the country, generally adding that in Kisoro district, an all-weather trunk tarmac road has been built while the major centers in the district have got electricity supply. He revealed that plans are underway to build tourism roads in the area and that Kisoro airstrip will be upgraded to an airport. He also promised that government would study their request of making Uchimbidi a constituency with a view of extending more services to the area. He used the occasion to caution the population against sectarianism and noted that the people of the area voted for NRM because the movement enabled them to unite. Regarding land issues, President Museveni cautioned the people of Kisoro district against continued land fragmentation activities, noting that Wanainchi live on small pieces of land because of rampant land fragmentation whose negative effects were not sensitized to them by the previous leaders. He therefore urged them to do proper calculations before embarking on any production venture. So, Kwenta asia ya kisoro. Koko wanza no, obhinji no mulisa, kwa wakabili nubi obo na ambuzi. He advised the residents to leave tea growing activities to people who own big pieces of land and suggested to those with small pieces to cultivate onions, among other items that generate high income on small land acreages. He also said that the government is making progress in the establishment of a tea factory in Kisoro district. He also disclosed that plans are underway to establish an iron and steel plant in the neighboring Rwanda district and the government was making progress in the construction of the Kale Memorial Institute. Turning to regional affairs, the president said that the situation between Uganda and neighboring Rwanda will stabilize as he is in touch with President Paul Kagame. Earlier, the president laid a foundation stone of the library of Kavani Secondary School in Bufumbira East constituency. He was conducted on a guided tour of the project by the area member of parliament in Sababturo. He also laid the foundation stone of Joseph Fundatida Community Resource Center that is expected to provide library, conference hall and ICT laboratory services. Another project for which he laid a foundation stone was Bishop Barnabas Halemana Memorial Vocational Secondary School. Kisoro District LC5 Chairman Abdel Bizimana observed that President Museveni and the NRM government brought to the people of Uganda the dividend of peace, adding that the people want to continue being peaceful. He also saluted him for getting solutions to major global challenges such as the conflict in Somalia, noting that Mr. Museveni has registered big strides where other leaders have not managed to venture. Bufumbira East Member of Parliament in Sababuturo commended President Museveni for his wise leadership. Prisla Namara reporting in Kisoro.
In other news, the late Major Naomi Karunji has been hailed for promoting peace in Uganda. During a funeral service held at Bugolobi Resurrection Church, mourners described the let as a courageous team player who played a big role in the transformation of the country. Major Naomi died alongside her flight crew member on Tuesday this week, as this report is going to tell us. Remains of the late Major Naomi Karunji arrived at the Church of Resurrection Bugolobi at exactly 10.30 a.m. under UPDF funeral services for the last funeral tributes. The late Major Naomi Karunji was a pilot commander in the Uganda People's Defense Air Forces who died alongside her crew member Lieutenant Benon Wakalo on Tuesday this week after the plane they were flying crashed in the areas of Ndese in Butambala district. Relatives friends and high-profile dignitaries, including the former Minister for Security, Lieutenant General Henry Tumukunde, and UPDF Chief of Defense Forces, General David Muhozi, accompanied by several men and women in uniform, attended the funeral service to celebrate the life of the fallen soldier. It's a tough day. And when we, we had this news, we said that we were going to Naomi's house. But we felt like we've been losing people, but it was far. So we said, eh, now death has come close. It has taken one of us. She believed in the incorruptible person who lives within us, as in our souls, which never dies. Relatives of the fallen major, accompanied by Colonel Moses Ikiriza, hailed the government for promoting gender balance by allowing women take up such high profile positions. I want to encourage mourners not to buy into this social media trash. We thank you for minimizing the silent gender bias and you give now an opportunity to work. Without that, she wouldn't have accomplished this. We thank you. Reverend Dina Natkunda, the day's celebrant challenged the congregation to follow in the footsteps of Major Karunji in promoting peace in the country. We need them to serve this country well. We need them to serve God's people well. But when time like this comes, we all take the same journey. He doesn't separate us and say, for you, you are rich, for you are like this. Born in 1981, the late Major Naomi Karunji made up her mind to join military service in 2004. She broke the monopoly of men, correction, monotony of men dominating flying in Air Force. And many of us here, including VIPs, can attest to the fact that she has been a beacon. And I will take this occasion to salute them and their contribution through Naomi here lying in state. But by the same breath, I want to salute the Commander-in-Chief in that wise investment in this important game changer, the Air Force. The late Major Naomi will be laid to rest on Friday 31st January 2020 at Risuru Village, Nyakashashara Sub-County in Chirihura District. Daniel Mugoya reporting for UBC News. May her soul rest in eternal peace. In other news, Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development says that engagements with labor export companies has yielded positive results with some revoked licenses of some companies reinstated. The communications officer at the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, Frank Mugabe, says that the ministry has met externalization of labor officials to resolving challenges to their businesses. The Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development has reassured the general public that problems that had afflicted labor recruitment companies have now been resolved. Frank Mugabe, the communications officer in the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, appeals to the youth to deal with only companies registered by the ministry and also utilize the ministry website to know genuine recruitment companies. First thing you should do is ensure that the company you want to deal with is still uh, licensed and their, uh, their license is still running. Once they do that, then uh, they are free to log on and uh, get jobs. And by the way, uh, all jobs now are online. So we encourage all the youth who are out there to make use of the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development website. Uh, 
to look at the jobs that are available and do applications online. Middle East has been doing a good job. Middle East has been doing a good job. One, they have been monitoring the, the people they place abroad, and we are happy with that. They do monthly quarterly reports of the people they have placed, so their record has been impeccable. But like uh, any other business, I would say, there are challenges that come up. This communication follows several meetings between gender ministry officials and labor externalization companies aimed at ironing out case-taking issues. During the press conference, the Public Relations Officer Middle East Consultants Andrew Seguia appealed to foreign missions abroad to always work together with recruiting companies in order to have a harmonious relationship. Mugabe added that after the ministry returning their license, they have resumed operations and now have over 400 jobs for Ugandans wishing to travel to the UAE for employment. Shaidat Nasaku, UBC News. In other news, the judicial officers are advocating for better working conditions and enhancement of their security. During the closing session of the 22nd Annual Judges Conference, the issue of security and allowances took a center stage with the judges demanding for a shepherd as opposed to to drivers. On Tuesday, President Yori Museven called for better enrollments of judges, including befitting retirement packages. We can definitely move them to regional standards, even, even international standards, so that they. I have no, no problem with, with that and I will work for it. But before this come into effect, judges demanded an improvement on the current working conditions with emphasis on security. But I have, I'm here to see a chauffeur. I know that KCC has chauffeurs. A chauffeur is not an ordinary driver. He is a driver with more capacity than driving. He can uh, photocopy, he can be a, an office boy, he can uh, be a whatever. And KCC has trained these people. We, we do not have that category. Our letters say chauffeur driven, but we don't have chauffeurs driving judges. At the close of the 22nd Annual Judges Conference, Chief Justice Bart Katulebe said that ensuring security for judges will be top on the agenda. There is no minimizing the need to have the equipment to enable you to do your work. And I'm glad that our permanent secretary has been quite vigorous in this debate and uh, I'm sure um, he will continue to fight it. On this pious Bijirimana could not agree more. Actually I want to have a serious conversation with the police because I do not really want the security of judicial officers to be uh, compromised because you do a lot of sensitive work and I believe that any person who is so responsible and sensitive, should you see that? The soon retiring Chief Justice also used the platform to bid farewell to the judiciary advising officers to serve as their constitutional mandate prescribes. I thank all those that we have worked, I have worked with and uh, I thank the judicial community in the last 15 years that I have been in the judiciary proper as a Supreme Court judge and the, the last five years as Chief Justice, I have enjoyed tremendous cooperation and support. So I'm extremely grateful and um, I go back home to graze my goats and play with my grandchildren with the very fond memories of the judiciary. The hunt for the new Chief Justice is ongoing with applications closing on Friday. Lydia Chomkama, UBC. As you can see there, he got a standing ovation for his term in office. Very beautiful right there. Thank you, Lydia. In other news, the civil society organizations want the budget for the agricultural sector increased in the financial year 2020-2021. Now, according to them, increasing the funding for the agricultural sector will reduce poverty, contribute to sustainable development, and promote industrialization.
This was highlighted during the pre-budget dialogue on the financial year 2020-2021 National Budget Framework paper held here in Kampala and Adia Nakuti report. Statistics show that the agricultural sector contributes 75% to Uganda's economy, but funding, especially to agricultural research, has remained below 2% of the national budget over the years. During the pre-budget dialogue on the financial year 2020-2021 National Budget Framework paper, agricultural sector underfunding took center stage. According to economists, substantial investment in the agricultural sector will create wealth, promote industrialization and economic growth. This particular budget that is coming up for next year is anchored on using agriculture for industrialization. But we are saying we are seeing a lot of imports of agricultural related products, animal and animal products, things like vegetable oil. They are still coming into the country now. The imports are competing with the local production. So we need to find out to begin with, even before you say stop importing, why are people importing? Can we address those issues so that whoever is importing can now buy and source these things locally? Because if that continues, then chances are imported products are going to outcompete our local farmers, and that means then our budget which we are putting into the country would not give us the result. However, what remains our concern is the continuous importation of some agricultural products and raw materials to the tune of 400 million US dollars annually, which undermines the Buy Uganda, Build Uganda initiative. We have seen that imports of agricultural products, at least on an uh, annual basis, agricultural related products are in the range of 400 million dollars. That's quite substantial. First of all, it is loss of revenue to the, of the country in two external areas, but also it is undermining. If that $400 million had gone into the Uganda agricultural sector, it would do a, do a lot for the poor small-scale farmers and those other medium to large-scale farmers who are in the sector. Some members of parliament on the agriculture committee are of the view that local governments should be well financed in order to facilitate accession workers to reach the farmers. The government has strategically done well at the national level, but the local governments are not empowered. They complain, they have no resources, they have very small budgets. Sorry, that's very generic as far as I'm concerned. They think everything, but they don't think to the most logical conclusion of how far we can make things happen. That we shall be very supportive on this idea and the strategies that you have given us. We, are, we also see where the country is going. But the issue of implementation has become a problem. The farmers also need to be trained on market-oriented production to improve on the quality of products. Adiana Kute, UBC. There is need for players in the energy sector to promote the use of gas and mitigate the effects of climate change. The managing director of Vivo Energy Uganda, Gilbert Asi, says that the company is embarking on engaging sector players and responsible government ministries and departments to engage the public on climate change. Now, Mr. Asi was speaking at the media breakfast in Kampala. Environmental conservation, we talked about Tuveku Kavera, we talked about tree planting. But one important thing I think I should highlight is how our households are using energy for cooking. Uh, a census study made by the government in 2014 highlighted that only 0.8% of the households that were surveyed were using cooking gas. Because cooking gas is, belie is believed to be uh, expensive and not safe. We can talk about that, but what I want to highlight is 72% of the households are using firewood and 23% of the households are using charcoal. This is 94% of the population cutting trees. And according to that study, if we don't change the trend, by 2051, the whole of Uganda will be in a drought situation. So the contribution we can bring as a company is to promote the use of LPG, of cooking gas. And, and we are looking forward to partnering with government to work together, find ways to promote the use of cooking gas in, in the households. That will contribute to really preserving our forests and deal with the, the issue of climate change.
So these are the things we think about as a company, and, and we are going to do our best to make sure that we bring along all the companies that are operating our industry, and we bring along the ministries to make sure that we work together to promote the use of LPG. In other news, residents of Buwekula village in Mafubira sub-county, Jinja district, discovering the body of a suspected thief burnt beyond recognition. The Thursday morning incident was witnessed by Kaswabuli Richard, who says that he suspected thieves attempted to rob the shop of a one hundred a shop retailer. At 1 a.m., the incident was also witnessed by Sarah Navidia, who says that the thugs also robbed her money. The officer in charge, Mafubira police, cautioned the public against taking the law in their hands and warned arrest of culprit. Bagana ba kazi ba bagema jeke, bagana ba mtu ba kola si, ba ba na gabu sawa, ida mukuzio gutwari kuni mtaremwa, ngaba ngaba mazo kugema mu kazi ba kuzi si, ba mtu ili kuakati, akasa wao, na ba pichi, atenzi ndukusaba, kabidi ne chini chini rabiri, abantu aba boda, ba vuga ba chowi ide, agadi bigano, agadi bali, chini chito no abantu ba bonero kuo. Kuberai, chini cha guire hoi, tulikuenda abantu ba bonye ro kundi chini kai cha chichona ne cha ni namu lesa, ni chini, ne chini chiga ida na tu chiga kwa chiga kolewa. Kamuti yumba kuberai na vua yuona yuona ngezi ya chini tu na chini, aya bonye kaya vua muti yumba hicho, ne yanzi ingiza uwe na uwati swa. Atu wali kujia kufwa, esente doti di kutasa, wula mugu. Na hakoba nti yi baba, nti malagandeka, nti ze nti mkazi, ipana na bandaza, baba iwe ya fwa, nsoniwa, nsoniwa, nsoniwa. Ida, 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 nini ya nindiri dati, ambuziza miyaka, bichi, nga nini ya nkoba atijia, atiecha chikubo, chimanyi, nti yi atigeda. Banda nalubuka. Chukumi na mateka. Ebi kolobi ukubavantu ukubaiicha. Muntu wa hizo msaango yeta ga second chance. Agemi wa tuali mbe mungu gaza mateka. Awaze sebwe. Dogo hizo yabula gira. Tufumiri da ebi kolobi na mateka. Yatu likuulo ya zama kose chino. Ida kupagema ba tuali mbe mungu gaza mateka. Tufumiri ebi kolobi ukubavantu ukubaiicha. Muntu wa hizo msaango yeta ga second chance. Agemi wa tuali mbe mungu gaza mateka. Awaze sebwe. Especially mob justice. We don't tolerate it, and whoever was involved in this, we shall investigate, and they will be arrested and produced in courts of law. That's how events unfolded in Mafubira Ginger District. Let's now take a short break, and we shall be back with more news tonight. Please stay tuned. Operation Wealth Creation is coordinating all government ministries, departments and agencies to unveil unique investment opportunities in every region of Uganda to local and international investors to transform subsistence farmers into the money economy. Operation Wealth Creation presents the Renzori Investment Expo scheduled for the 30th to 31st of January 2020 at Mountains of the Moon University, Fort Porto City. Theme, Investment for Local Economic Development. This expo is one of the many regional investment expos anchored on agro industrialization for local economic development agri led program and will be held countrywide come explore investment opportunities in the renzori region from mining tourism agriculture and many more the guest of honor will be his excellency yoweri kagutam Seveni, the president of the republic of uganda for more information contact national organizing committee I'm DJ Drogba. On average, almost 250,000 people die on the road in Africa each year. As a proud African, this breaks my heart knowing that so many deaths could have been avoided. So when you're on the road, follow these safe steps and help save lives. The numbers don't lie. Seatbelts save lives. Drivers and passengers must always wear a seatbelt. Passengers who don't wear seatbelts are a danger to themselves and others. In a crash, they can be thrown around the car, causing serious injury. Ensure children are safely fastened in car seats suitable for the size and weight. And keep small children out of the front seat. So when you're on the road, follow these safe steps and help save lives. We all have a role to play in road safety. Together, let's make Africa's road safer. 
It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field could not be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communications sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Welcome back. You're still watching the news tonight here on UBC TV, broadcasting live from Nile Avenue. And also do remember we are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube under the tags UBC TV Uganda. In our business news, National Insurance Corporation has officially bid farewell to their longest serving board chairman, Dr. Martin Alika. Dr. Alan Shinobi takes over from Dr. Martin Alika, who has been chairman of Uganda's only listed company with wholly owned insurance subsidiary since 2014. Dr. Alan Shinobi is the new board chairman of the National Insurance Corporation, NIC, taking over from Dr. Martin Alika, who has been serving in this capacity since 2014. Dr. Martin Alika late last year served notice to the company shareholders that he will be retiring. At the farewell dinner organized in his honor, Dr. Alika was described by many as an exemplary leader and someone who has contributed a lot to the growth of the private sector in Uganda. We're here this evening to celebrate him. We're here this evening to thank and appreciate him for what he has been to us as an IC. Uh, but even as the member of the household that he was chairman over, uh, we really do appreciate him. Uh, so we're here this evening just to uh, be with him once again and celebrate him. On his part, Dr. Lika thanked the shareholders and the insuring public who have maintained steadfast support to the Nick brand, adding that he hands over the amount of chairmanship to a well-deserved person. I am very grateful that all of you have turned out to come and say farewell to me. Your chairman need not be afraid. He has worn my shoes before. And in those old shoes, he did so well. Dr. Alan Shonobi is a senior counsel who has served in many professional capacities, including being elected to serve as the president of the East African Law Society, overseeing lawyers in five countries in the East African region. He promised to work hard in the service of Nick and its esteemed clients to justify the confidence reposed in him by the board. That was Samuel Senono with that report. In other news, the inaugural Pakistan Africa Trade and Investment Summit has kicked off at the Jomo Kenyatta Convention Center in Nairobi. The high level conference has brought together business people, policymakers, and potential investors from Pakistan and Africa to network, explore trade opportunities. It is hoped that the interface will help boost the two way trade interface to over the current $4.3 billion, as Sigoa reports. On the team to engage and look at Africa, the inaugural event seeks to come up with a pragmatic strategy to enhance relations between Pakistan and African countries. Pakistan's health industry developed that course. We produce a range of high quality, the high end products that are available at far more prices than their Western and other counterparts. We have 17 capabilities comparable. While gracing over the two-day event, President Uru Kenyatta underscored the importance of Africa tapping onto vast business opportunities in key sectors of the economy. There is no doubt.
my mind, that the private sector plays a crucial role in our economic development agenda. Indeed, it is imperative to place it at the forefront as the engine of our continental economic transformation agenda. Africa today is the focus of the entire world, particularly of the major and middle powers. Being the second largest continent with a population of over 1.3 billion people, Africa, the home of 54 sovereign states, is proving to be the continent of the future. This conference goes a long way, reaffirming the reality that stronger bonds will be built between brothers and sisters across the African continent under a single trading platform of the African Continental Free Trade Area Framework on which all third parties shall engage Africa on matters free and investment. So if the government of Pakistan have to open eyes on Africa before they can see in America, in Europe, no, but first time they have to initiative in uh, Africa and uh, it's good for East Africa. Africa is on a steady growth trajectory. Its rich natural resources, vast import market and strong economic growth patterns are appealing to investors. Today, politics, economy, peace, security, demography and geography all combine to form an organic mix. According to participants at the ongoing Pakistan-Africa Trade Conference in Nairobi, Kenya, recognizing this sea change and making requisite adjustments is vital. Dennis Igoa for UBC News in Nairobi. Thank you, Dennis Sigor. In other news, Muelo Parish residents in Toro District wanted the investment. Hima, a multi-billion national cement manufacturing company, had interest in the 50-acre rocky land within the parish. Now, in part two of the Muelo Rock Land Acquisition Investigation, the multi-million dollar project never kicked off following conflicts between the community and the investor. Dennis Sigor again reports. After the intense court session, Justice Bamugemerere and team exposing flaws in the land surface rights acquisition, it was resolved that HIMA and its agent, Optima Mines, find an amicable solution to the matter. Bad practices and fraudulent practices in land sector or related sectors definitely affect investment and, and, and affect the way that business is done and eventually affect Uganda as a, an investment destination. What is sure is HIMA has not interacted directly enough with the people. We have not explained enough what we wanted to do. And maybe um, some of them, there was some misunderstanding on the duration of the, uh, of the uh, operation we wanted to do. We take it's responsibility. Is that up to 600 million like we are told yesterday? Much more. Much more. At least we paid 600 million to Optima Mine for our work that was not properly done. According to the commission, the modalities used to acquire Melo Rock land was flawed and some major malpractices were cited. It's one of those cases where you investigate something and certain things which are not right just come out. I don't know if you want to make a lot of efforts. So the dealings of Optima were found not to meet the standards expected of a government or of a, a private company of the Hima, 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 Hima. Hima. To protect its reputation locally and globally, Hima Cement decided to relinquish the disputed land. Uh, unfortunately, the third party didn't carry out the work to the required standard and, uh, and I think that the substandard um, compensation process led to people suffering a lot of inequality and on 17th of july 2019 jean michel pons the new chief executive officer of hima cement accompanied by top officials and in a ceremony witnessed by the officials from uganda land commission hima relinquished the disputed land please enjoy this land i think you should not take picture of myself you should take picture of 
the landscape that is really beautiful. Some of the local community members rejoiced over the decision of Hima when others felt betrayed. You know, we are not against development in this place. Okay? If Hima is interested in the land, let the due process be followed. If any investor is coming, let the due process be followed. Huh? What? Once the transparency is carried, huh? and we are all involved, huh? Huh? We, we, have no, we, we have no problem with it. Why are you going to do it? Why you going to do it? Why are you going to do it? Why are to do but we go to send it to Sembere Kobali, Gavamas and Mulimo go to Komo Banga Shaf. Domino come in my Ganda Chandere, Woman to Dongo, Tomajaka to Bedo, Johnny come in my Ganda Ramana of his son. Woman to Ramaku, you is Sarkome, Merakarapara. It may have seemed like a good gesture from the investor, but experts believe the project could have been successfully implemented if the law was followed to the latter. All investors that are interested in acquiring or executing. Uh, mining projects in Uganda are by law required to first secure surface rights. As you know, constitutionally, uh, all minerals belong to uh, the state that holds them in trust for the, uh, its people, who are the citizens of Uganda. Uh, at the same time, uh, the constitution provides that land belongs to the people. So it's very important that any investor ensures they balance those two interests to avoid any conflicts uh, and to ensure that uh, their projects are being executed responsibly. Now, uh, the first step that would advise a mining investor uh, interested in securing uh, surface rights before they embark on mining, as you know mining comes in different phases. You have exploration, which is always the first phase. You explore for three to seven years according to the Mining Act. To avoid future conflicts, investors in Uganda's mining sector are advised to do a feasibility study on where the acreage is, find out the land market value of the area, involve the community from the onset and be willing to negotiate with the landowners. Investors forget that uh, the communities are the best, you know, security you can get for their investment. Uh, if you engage them during the negotiations, sensitize them about what the project is, be as willing as possible to share all relevant information. Do not hide information because it will be in the public domain. So share all the relevant information with the communities. Uh, demonstrate to them how this project is important for the development of the country. It's important for their own development. What are the benefits? What linkages uh, can they attach themselves to in the course of the development of this project. Your project can actually fail right from the point of surface rights acquisition. If you get it wrong from the start, trust me, your project is going to be uh, dogged down by uh, lawsuits in courts, people claiming you never compensated them, you were never adequately compensated, or you did not disclose fully all the information they should have. So make sure you get experts to guide you on how you you proceed on that. Uh, I would say on the GAP side as well, our current Mining Act does not really give you a procedure of how to proceed specifically with mining rights acquisition. All it stipulates is we expect you to get surface rights. How you get surface rights is not really dictated. That's why you now have to consider looking at the provisions of the land law. However, Mwelo residents are still interested in investment in their area. They believe the quarrying project can transform the local economy positively. Mm. Aneno gimu bedo to sana anu no ngaba fama me aba foyo ni uka ubino paka ubina ma anu ba no nganti erwe de miyo part para so we want the government or the contractors to come and pay us money so so you are willing to to give out your land to vacate the land yes 
uh, very soon as long as you get the right amount of money yes so for me i want money there's no problem consensus matters eh? if you engage solution comes in with engagement there is solution but things, things of handling things the kangaroo style ah, we don't want let, let, let the, the investor if there is another investor who is willing to come let that investor come it is obvious once beaten twice shy Hima might not be interested anymore in the granite rocks but the rocky land in Muelo Tororo district is still a resource of economic value In the world of sports, the 2020 World Athletics Indoor Championship is in Nanjing, Nanjing, having been postponed because of the fears over the spread of the coronavirus in China. The development has consequently affected two Ugandan Middle East distance stars, world champion Halima Nakai and Winnie Nanyondo, who are scheduled to represent Uganda in the Indoor Championships. The championships were earlier scheduled to take place March 13th to 15th in 2020 in Nanjing. But World Athletics governing body sought advice from the World Health Organization and turned down offers to host from other cities. The coronavirus has killed more than 130 people in China and has spread to 16 countries globally. Around 6,000 people in all have been infected by the virus for which there is no specific cure or vaccine. The epicenter of the outbreak is the Chinese city of Wuhan and around 370 miles from Nanjing. A World Athletic statement read that the advice from our medical team who are in contact with the World Health Organization is that the spread of the coronavirus both within China and outside the country is still at a concerning level and no one should be going ahead in with any major gathering that can be postponed. In other sports news, Uganda Tennis Association is devising means to resuscitate the sport. They, they have started with the inaugural tennis for all national junior opens that has climaxed at Lugogo Tennis Club in Kampala. Details follow. After two days of action at Lugogo Tennis Club, the national junior open tournament has climaxed. It was open to players between 6 and 18 years. The tournament I used to select a team to represent Uganda in the upcoming East Africa Junior Championship in March attracted more than 100 players, most of whom confess benefiting immensely. Listen to me, you've not had such tournaments. So, I, 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 I learned how to handle, to play different people, because in tennis everyone has his own style. So, if you play more matches, you get that experience. Veteran coach John Oduke believes such a tournament will benefit players as Uganda Tennis Association tries to resuscitate the sport. We had a very strong urge of learning the game and even competing. And, and by then, of course, there were so many competitions. So it made it more vibrant uh, for us uh, to, you know, to, to, to make the game sound so much. In the under six category, praise Ageno Mungu beat all other girls, while Kakuru Biarugaba aged the boys. Alikatende and Anisha Nakato triumphed in the under eight category. Francis Agonzebo and Maggie Namanda were the best in the under 14, while Geoffrey Ocheng and Patience Athieno dominated the under 18s. Other winners were Annette Awat, Michael Ntare, Edina Nabilio, and Precious Apio. John Burns, Sentamu, reporting. In our sports news, the Federation of Motorsports Clubs in Uganda goes to the polls this weekend with tight competition expected for all positions. The elections at which 89 delegates determine fate will be at Katikati Restaurant in Kampala.
About five years ago, government through National Council of Sports advised the sports federations to re-register upon a meeting set criteria. Many started the journey and fulfilled, while some like golf have just finalized their process. Uh, we shall continue being very transparent, we shall continue being compliant, and we shall uh, be working with that quite a bit. And um, we know that we want to let set an example. If we can set an example, we'll follow the examples of all the federations that have already been so. And to work with you and all the other federations to make sports an important part of our society, an important part of the national development plan, and an important part of our personal lives because without sports, we know of the, the high caliber persons and senior citizens who always uh, associate very closely with the sport. We want to tap from their expertise and their network so that we're able to have our government for more funding in other aspects of sport development in this country at least. So definitely your support is allied. National Council of Sports Assistant Secretary General David Katende welcomes the new member and advises others yet to register to follow suit. It was not legally recognized, but now that we have given this, them this certificate, this is a true testimony that now they are a true national sports association and they are free now to use the name Uganda as part of their name and also to seek for government support in terms of their sports development programs. What now follows for all fully certified federations is a process to confirm reality with things like offices, books of accounts and proof of nationwide activities are must have. John Burns, St. reporting. Well, we do apologize. That was the Uganda Golf Union, which has become the latest member of the National Council of Sports. Well, in other news still, the Federation of Motor Sports Clubs in Uganda goes to the polls this weekend with tight competitions expected for all positions. The elections at which 89 delegates determined FET will be at Katikati Restaurant in Kampala. we we'll give you the story right about now. Motorsport enthusiasts will by this weekend have new leadership after elections slated for Saturday at Katikati Restaurant in Kampala. It's expected to be a tight contest for all positions, notably presidency, which has four contestants, including incumbent Dusmanoki, Dipuru Pareria, Joffrey Samba, and Jack Wavamuno. The biggest challenges for the incoming executive are broken down by Ernest Ziwa, himself a contestant for the assistant general secretary slot. Continental and uh, internationally you'll find that we have the biggest number of spectators but the issue can they be controlled and this is a safety sport so can we put it to that other level so we think that it's high time to call upon more to make the the, the sport suitable, the environment clean so that it can attract more sponsors and make this sport uh, uh, a strong sport. And uh, the issue of transparency is highly needed because when you look at the, this sport, you're looking at timing. People, uh, the way we judge who wins, who wins, it is a time thing. So any case of human resource error, it means uh, you have affected the sport. So more trainings will need to be taken on and we should look at putting this sport going to the other level of uh, the international way it should be looked at. Other positions up for grabs include Vice President, General Secretary, Deputy Vice President in charge of motorsport, Deputy Vice for motorcycling and Deputy Vice for Tuareg. The Electoral Commission is of three including veteran driver Moses Lumara, Fred Obo and David Mayanja. John Burns, Sentamu, reporting. In more sports news, the reigning Uganda Premier League champions, KCCAFC, will be looking to add more pressure on the table leaders, Viper Sports Club. KCCA play URA knowing that a win will help them secure top position. The Vipers topped the table on with 43 points, two points better than their rivals, KCCA. Now, as URA host KCCA FC in Deje, Maroons FC will be playing Toro United. 
KCCA FC head coach Mike Mutevi says that he has no pressure coming into this game. Well, let's now take a look at the weather update. Brought to you by NEMA, ensuring sustainable development. Hello there, good evening. I'm Alitubela Juliet from Uganda National Meteorological Authority. Today, most parts of the country have had partly cloudy skies with isolated showers. And from the rainfall report received by 9 a.m. this morning, it is indicating Tororo with the highest of 49.2 millimeters, Bududa 40.2, Soroti 13.5, whereas Masaka reported 1.6 millimeters. From the satellite image taken over Africa, it is indicating that the rain belt is the and covering some parts within our country and also low pressure centers over Indian Ocean have deprived us from the moisture that would have come to our country. Tomorrow morning we are expecting light rains in most parts of our country apart from a few areas in the eastern where we are expecting partly cloudy skies. Later in the afternoon we are expecting the same weather to continue in most parts of Uganda. The maximum temperatures will rise up to 29 degrees centigrade for the northern region. Around the lake we expect a range of 26 to 27, Kampala 26 and for Kabale Highlands we are expecting 23 degrees centigrade. And if you intend to go beyond Uganda, we are expecting Nairobi to have sunny intervals together with Tokyo and New York at a maximum of 7 in New York. Light trains are expected for land, whereas sunny conditions for Dubai. Thank you for keeping us company. Find us tomorrow at the same time. Have a blessed night. Well, thank you, Juliet. And that brings us to the end of our news tonight bulletin. My name is Wadulo Mark Arnold, and on sign language, we had Mugalu Mohammed. Good afternoon, and good night, rather, and see you tomorrow. Was brought to you by UCC, celebrating 20 years of achievements. The family of Benby Ambabazi and Professor Grace Ndezi with sorrow announced the death of their son, Jonan Kagamba, which occurred on Thursday 30th, January 2020. There will be a funeral service at St. Andrew's Bukoto Church of Uganda on 31st, January 2020, starting at 10 a.m. Burial is on Saturday 1st, February 2020 at their home, Nyakabari, Rugando, Wampara District. Informed are all relatives, in-laws and friends. Above all kingdoms above Up next on UBC Blue